uh, liver surgery itself is complex but uh, trust me no surgery or no disease is as complex as uh, managing hyalurcholangic carcinoma these are some of the most complex procedures that one can do and often we should try to look for simplicity in complexity rather than the other way around the famous albert einstein quote and i think you should pay a look at this when you sit on a red hot cinder a second seems like an hour i mean that's relativity but that's certainly hyalurcholangiocarcinoma for any successful resection of uh, hyalurcholangiocarcinomas uh, knowing the biliary as well as the hepatic plate anatomy as well as, as well as the caudate lobe anatomy is of prime importance uh so the the the, the various biliary radicals the hyalur plate the gall bladder plate the lanex capsule the arancius canal as well as arancius plate as well as anatomy of the caudate lobe are of prime importance in dealing uh, with these patients and that's again uh, as i said the the caudate lobe and as you have the the spigelin part of it and then you have the paracaval and the caudate process out here uh, as a rule in all hyalurcholangic carcinomas beyond bismuth correlate 2 the caudate lobe comes out as part of the specimen primarily because the drainage occurs in the hilum particularly on the left side uh, i think much has been said about the bismuth correlate uh, classification by amar anirudh so i think we can skip it everybody knows about it but this is what is something more uh, is is more like a working classification the bloomgard yarnagin classification from mskcc the t1 is the standard bismuth correlate classification ipsilateral involvement no vascular involved ipsilateral uh, disease with no vascular involvement and no lobar atrophy the t2 is either is is ipsilateral disease with either vascular involvement the portal vein predominantly or lobar atrophy on the ipsilateral side the t3 is basically bilateral disease that's the bismuth correlate 4 and or atrophy of the contralateral side i think that's that's what one has to understand contralateral side atrophy certainly there is no role for any kind of surgical treatment and bilateral vascular involvement particularly of the contralateral hepatic artery so if the contralateral hepatic artery is involved with bilateral portal vein involvement the disease is too extensive to resect and to reconstruct so i think this is a good classification that we follow pretty often apart from the bismuth correlate and it's a good according to me it's a good uh, working classification so these are the principles of surgery when we take up uh, uh, these patients that uh, one has to look for r0 resection uh, but trust me in our own series as well as worldwide literature if you look at it at least around 10 to 15% of the patients have r1 disease in the specimen as mentioned earlier combined caudate lobe plus liver resection and bile duct resection and radical lymphadenectomy that's the essence of uh, the surgery and the extent of resection depends upon the longitudinal and the radial spread of the tumor along the intrahepatic segmental bile ducts at times one has to undertake major vascular resections and reconstructions to achieve an r0 status now what are the issues that one considers in surgical management of course primarily can i get it out or not should i get it out or not first can i get it out or not am i going to get a negative margin when i get the tumor out what is the status of the flr is it adequate is it not do i need to augment it do i need to get a pre operative biliary drainage prior to resection and is any vascular reconstruction that's needed so assessment of resectability is best seen on the mrcp as well as on the ct often for the biliary extent we do an mrcp this one is an exception out here this is a type 2 uh, uh, hyalurcholangiocarcinoma which is which is extremely well seen with the ct scan you can see the right and the left tuck and the hilum involved out here and that's the disease and uh, the mrcp seems to be lagging a bit behind out here you really can't make out the extent of the disease on the right side but of course that that's the disease uh, you can see the left duct well the key out here is you know i mean for the students in the audience uh, if you're given one picture of the mr and asked to stage it often as you can see out here it is impossible to stage 
so you need to have the entire mr scene and preferably and for that matter even the ct scan predominantly on the on the console i mean that's where you going to really make out what is what rather than just uh, the patient coming with the plates and as a rule we always ask for the cds to have a look at them or uh, mdct again triphasic what we do a liver protocol is is good primarily from the vascular point of view so often we are asked this question in the exams and this particularly again for the the students in the audience is that what do you prefer whether you would want to get an, a, a ct scan or an mr for hyalocholangiocarcinoma the answer is no both are complementary to each other rather than competitive so if you ask me my patient would need both a good mr ct to delineate the biliary extent of involvement and a good triphasic mdct to delineate the vascular pattern so i think there is no uh, a substitute for that of course as you know the ct would also tell you about the extent of metastatic disease if at all it will also tell you about the liver volume and in the same sitting if you are planning if 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 the uh, the disease seems receptible one can always get a liver volumetric study done and this is a critical thing margins in hyalocholangiocarcinoma so one has to look at multiple margins the proximal ductal margin which is towards the liver the distal margin that is towards the pancreas and of course the radial or the circumferential or the periductal margins and vascular margin if at all there is a vascular involvement and the liver parenchymal margin so these and that's the reason we call them as periductal hyalocholangios the goal is to achieve a white tumor free margin as much distal to the disease as is possible and as much proximal to the disease as is possible on the contralateral side but ideally we look at around 5 mm away from the most palpable disease and this is where the problem is in patients who get stented often because of the fibrotic uh, component that occurs and the inflammation that occurs because of the stenting it is it is almost impossible to really palpate and feel for that uh, a nice uh, supple duct that could be beyond so even with an r0 resection only those with more than 5 mm tumor free margin have a better long term survival no anastomic recurrence in patients with tumor free margin more than 5 mm but as i mentioned earlier there are times when a tumor free margin does get compromised the question is do we send these these uh, ductal margins for frozen we often try and do it but again as i said sometimes there's a lot of dysplasia and and the interpretation may be varied and and there are times when you just can't go beyond a particular point so you can't go more proximally onto the duct because then you will not have an adequate flr that's remaining so at times uh, it's it's almost impossible to get a 5 mm margin so again i think uh, oft often repeated uh, topic preoperative biliary drainage has been covered well by dr farke but just just a few things uh, let's let's not go to when it is necessary i think it's already been said that uh, there was a time when uh, ptbd i have grown in the eras where we we used to do ptbds for every patient of hyalocholangiocarcinoma and that was primarily because there was enough data earlier which said that ptbds change the stage of the disease as compared to uh, uh, mrcps so you probably had a up staging of the disease on uh, cholangiograms on ptbds uh, as compared to uh, the older generation of uh, the mrcp machines of course now you have uh, 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 the three tesla and uh, uh, better uh, machines to give you a better quality of picture so a preoperative cholangiogram or ptbd certainly is not required to stage these diseases it is done as mentioned earlier for sepsis lowers jaundice improves the cellular immunity preparation for portal and embolization if the flr is inadequate of course you need a bilirubin uh, below 5 for that and of course and of course if one is planning new adjuvant therapy a uh, great difference between the eastern and the western concept so of course the master of uh, the eastern side professor nimura uh, whom we have all learned so much from their primary aim is to lower the bilirubin levels to around 3 and below so as to have a good drainage and a good resectional uh, and have less complications in the post operative phase not reflected by the series on the western side predominantly professor shirkis uh, series came as early as the late 90s 
wherein they resected patients even with bilirubin of 15 and above with major hepatectomy is either right hand or left well i mean it's a, it's a major uh, uh, play and controversy it's beyond the realm of this talk so just to keep matter short if at all one has to do preoperative drainage it has to be the flr and according to according to bloomgard's concept just draining the flr with a ptbd does increase uh, the functional volume of the of the its lateral side or rather the the contralateral side of the flr Certainly, avoid metal stent placement as is done out here. As you can see, of course, this was an ERCP with uh, uh, two metal stents and uh, uh, one metal stent and two plastic stents. And patient again in cholangitis despite the stenting, and we had to get a, a PTPT done on the FLR side to relieve the jaundice as well as the cholangitis. Which also brings us to this this key uh, topic: admissible bilirubin levels for liver split. Now, I'm talking of these patients. Obviously, are not in cholangitis. They have come to you with jaundice. they are resectable can you split them can you resect it without draining the answer certainly is yes so if it's a left we have done up till around 8 but in the western side i know my colleagues doing it around even 10 and even 12 uh, assuming that again as i said patient is relatively healthy uh, has a good uh, uh, flr but for right hepatectomy is most would rather want to drain the biliary system and uh, in the flr and get the bilirubin down to under 3 i would certainly do that and if it's for tri section i would certainly get down to as near normal levels as possible mind you uh, it's not always possible to get the bilirubin levels low uh, to the ideal levels uh, because at times there may be a, a small segment of duct that is undrained and that keeps on giving repeated cholangitis and that's the big problem of hyalocholangic asthma the flr particularly in jaundice patients and cirrhotic patients we want an flr that is at least 40% or not or or beyond that uh, of course in a normal liver we know that even 25% of the remnant liver is is good enough inadequate flr certainly leads to uh, the phlf as uh, earlier mentioned by prasar flr augmentation is done commonly by in our uh, institute uh, postural embolization of course there is uh, even talk of now doing a hepatic vein embolization if there is no adequate augmentation of the flr by just doing a portal vein embolization uh, we have as yet no experience we've been happy with our radiologists and interventional radiologists doing uh, uh, portal vein embolizations uh, the good the kinetic rate generally we assess at the end of uh, around a couple of uh, weeks uh, and assess how much the growth has occurred again not recommended uh, routinely and there is enough data which says that routine pv really doesn't improve uh, the functional uh, quality of the liver and uh, as i said if if, uh, if if one is contemplating pv then a ptbd is mandatory uh, if the bilirubin is uh, beyond 5 uh, vascular reconstruction again we have to selectively weigh the pros and cons it is not that if there is contralateral vascular involvement it is a contraindication for surgery so long as you can get an r0 disease with a good vascular reconstruction with a good pro grade flow and again as is mentioned in red out here portal vein involvement is certainly not a contraindication again arterial resections uh, on the contralateral side uh, the outcomes are very unclear i mean there are aggressive surgeons who would do uh, contralateral arterial resections and uh, recons uh we have only one patient whom we had an arterial reconstruction uh but again as i said the survival benefit is not yet very clear for arterial uh, recon which also brings us to another concept that was floated by professor neuhaus from berlin the berlin group as they are popularly called as which was the no touch technique uh, the arm block resection the 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 treatment for all the patients was similar that one does a right trisectionectomy irrespective of whether it's a 3a or a 3b and perhaps a 4 and all of them with a the portal vein resection so all of these were resected and uh, the flr was reconstructed uh, with a portal vein uh, patch or a graft the whole idea being that you do not want to disseminate the disease at this point of time and as we all know a lot of times in cancer the no touch technique is the best of course this uh, this has not been replicated anywhere else and we still follow our standard teachings uh this is the algorithm how we would treat our patients 
uh, clinical presentation and let me also confess and aniruddha we aniruddha is, is is my friend and he is is not an aggressive endoscopist and we laugh about it but often we do get a lot of patients uh, who come to us with stents in place and as mentioned earlier uh, one should always think of the advantage point and uh, the american sniper whether one needs to do it or not of course if there is cholangitis one does either stent exchange or does a ptbd antibiotics no cholangitis non stented assess resectability i've added a pet ct out here but it is not a standard uh, norm for us we don't do a pet ct in all patients it's it's very selectively and very judiciously that we use it if it's resectable based upon the extent of resection whether it's a trisection or a hemihepatectomy we would calculate the flr and if flr augmentation is needed we would do a preoperative biliary drainage and then do a pve and of course the resection as mentioned earlier is with caudate lobectomy lymphadenectomy with or without a vascular recon and uh, again to to sum it up i think gunjan would do the summing up of this uh, most important is the preoperative planning in hyalocolangiocarcinomas portal vein involvement is not a contraindication for surgery ideal to have 5 mm margin and that's that's our team uh, and as for me team is an acronym together each achieves more and this acronym was taught to be my my good friend and my mentor dr rajiv joshi who is probably somewhere there in the audience thanks rajiv for that and this is the team that uh, does the hepatobiliary work uh, at uh, my place i leave you with this thank you for the kind uh, attention mm-hmm.